Good morning, everyone. My name is Sky Nicholson. My pronouns are she, her. I don't have a cool Madonna mic like Adrian does. So I got to stand here at this podium. <laughs> We're talking about play today. Play is often talked about as if it were a relief from serious learning. But for children, play is serious learning. Play is really the work of childhood. The child in me is still, and sometimes not so still. When we treat children's play as seriously as it deserves, we are helping them feel the joy that's to be found in the creative spirit. Whether we're a preschooler, or a young teen, a graduating college senior, or a retired person, we human beings all want to know that we're acceptable, that our being alive somehow makes a difference in the lives of others. It's very important, no matter what you may do professionally, to keep alive some of the healthy interests of your youth. Children's play is not just kid stuff. Children's play is rather the stuff of most future inventions. The thing I remember best about successful people I've met through all the years is their obvious delight in what they're doing, and it seems to have very little to do with worldly success. They just love what they're doing, and they love it in front of others. We will now light our chalice. Nixie, will you please come up? and light the chalice, and I invite you all to say the words on our screen. We light this beacon of hope, sign of our quest for truth and meaning in celebration of the life we share together. So it's no surprise that working with kids and helping adults remember to play, I generally have lots of toys around. So I thought it'd be good to review some things, help us remember how great things are. I didn't grab a stick because, you know, it's raining, but like a stick, right? What can a stick be? Sword. It could be a sword. It could be what? A magic wand. It could stir potions in a cauldron. It could be a cane, right? It could be all these different things that let us spark that light. And you know, what was really interesting as I was gathering things, we kept coming back to a lot of really classic toys. So I'm just gonna start here and we'll work our way down. You wanna come up first and grab something out of here and we'll talk about what it is. You wanna grab something? Yeah. Let's see what we have in our wonder box slash toy box today. You wanna grab something? Just pick one thing out. Oh, great choice. Okay. Because, you know, whoopee cushions are fun. We can be silly. It's okay to be silly just to have laughs. All right. What else do we have? Come on up. <gasps> Is that one of your favorites? Who remembers this guy? And the rainbow connection, right? The lovers, the dreamers, and me. Puppets. Puppets help stories come to life, help us work out big feelings. Puppets are great. You want to come up next? I know, no fozzy. Ooh, this game is in the kids' space as well. Anybody ever play this game? It's really old fashioned. It's something we used to play all the time. It's called clothespin drop. And the goal is, and you get out all different strategies of how to, uh, see, it's harder than it looks. And it's just the little rounded clothespins. That's a favorite. Come on up. Anybody here play clothespin drop as a kid? Yeah, I see a few hands. <gasps> Perfect. Dress up, dun, 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 dun. we can be superheroes and imagine all the different roles we want to play. For me, I remember Wonder Woman got unlocked very, very young in my core memories. All right, come on up.
Oh, I think Barbie's real popular. A lot of people went and saw Barbie last year. And one of the key things in the beginning scenes was before Barbie, little girls just had chances to play mom. And when Barbie came around, they got to dream of being ballerinas and astronauts and chefs and veterinarians and help them imagine all of those different things. And now Barbie has grown like more and more inclusive, different abilities and sizes and skin tones. And you see yourself represented in toys. All right, come on up. Oh, you have some of these in your room. Spinning tops. Anybody play with some of these? There's ones you can throw. Anybody have Beyblades now? There's Beyblades. There's all different things in between. There's zip ones. Super fun. You want to grab a toy, Sky? Oh my gosh. So fun fact, we all probably have a favorite crayon color. Mine's surly and blue. And this box, so originally crayon started with just one black crayon, kind of a variation on the pastel. And then it changed and grew. And now I think there's like whole kaleidoscoping towers. But this is kind of the staple, is it not? The 64 box with the built-in sharpener because that changes everything, right? You know, how simple. But that box where you can also see the, the colors stacked up, that's been around since 1958. It doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was. What about John? Do you want to grab anything? Yeah. Also, classic. Who does not love? Ooh, he's made a Play-Doh creature. Who doesn't love a good slinky? Oh, I'm playing with my yo-yo, chewing on some bubble gum. Oh, yeah. There you go. I'll keep working on it. All right, you keep working on it. I have a few other. Anybody remember playing Cats in the Cradle? Yeah, we've got some Cats in the Cradle. We've got some blocks you could build with, or I think this table might be lucky enough to have Jenga. And then anybody remember doing Jacks and Marbles? Yeah, some of the kids have Jacks and Marbles in your room. And... Of course, the tried and true classic, a uh, hula hoop. And I do need to give my little PSA about hula hoops here. A lot of, how many of us think we can't hula hoop anymore? Okay. You have the wrong sized hula hoop. So I have made some hula hoops that are out there that are bigger. Your hula hoop should fit between your chest and your navel. So that's the size hula hoop when it's on the ground. So this one's technically too small for me. But even though this is small for me, do you know what I can do? I can hula hoop like this. Good for your mind-body coordination, right? I can take it out of my arm, transfer it over. I can just go like this and just have fun. I can do a coin toss. There are all different ways that you can still play. I could come through and then pass it to my friend. We can create spots for people to crawl. We can jump in and out, all different ways. So today I'm hoping that through the power of play, the desire for radical fun and all these amazing partners in play that you will leave here with a newfound sense of play today. So we will sing our kids out to our classes and they're gonna go with Rhonda, and I promise you have fun there, and the adults are gonna have fun here, and then we'll reconnect, okay? Yes. Hey again. So um, when Adrian suggested that uh, I might share an original poem um, around this topic of play, it kind of came at a really good time. Um, about a week ago, I was at a woman's circle, and we were talking about our ancestors and um, particularly like for me, the women who came before me, the mothers and the grandmothers that came before me and thinking about um, gratitude and having gratitude for what they gave us. And I was kind of in this place of feeling the heaviness, the burden of um, just 
stress and anxiety. And all I could think about when I thought of my ancestors was heaviness. And so in this woman's circle, we went into a meditation and, and she was kind of asking us to, to just go in this place and, and connect with these ancestors. And, and when I came out of this meditation, it was like this, this epiphany had kind of come to me and I wrote this poem. It's called Lineage. The women who stood behind me, pressing upon each other's backs, mothers, grandmothers, women holding things, and yet also once children, innocent and full of wonder, there was a time when each of them ran barefoot. Play is hard when you're a mom, <laughs> which I know it sounds weird, right? Like it should be the other way around. I'm surrounded by the youth and imagination of my children. Therefore, it should be easy for me to just slip back out into my own inner child and join right into their play. But to be honest, when my daughter brings those Barbies out, my stomach clenches and my eyelids start to droop. Just the thought of spending the next 30 minutes trotting a tangled haired skipper around the dream house with her nursery full of big head LOL dolls exhausts me. As a mom, there is just too much to do to let myself float away into the world of play. Or maybe I've become so cynical as an adult that the fantasy of playing house makes me want to barf. I know that trying dress after dress on in a real life dressing room is not actually that fun. <sighs> so does my jaded adult mind make it impossible for me to let go and play? For many of us, our inner child has been tucked away so deeply within, either because of childhood trauma or simply by the belief that we have to act our age to be taken seriously, i.e. to be accepted and loved. It can be hard for me to remember that she is in there, filled with innocence and wonder. Free play would require me to drop my shields, let go of how I think I should be looking or acting, how I think I should be spending my time. Play would require me to forgive myself for not being 100% productive, to stop believing that busyness is a badge of honor. How often can you say that you've blocked out time in your schedule to do whatever the hell you wanted to do? <laughs> Sandra, I love you, Sandra. <laughs> There are many barriers to play, not the least of which is my fear of judgment, both from myself, I'm wasting my time, I should be doing something else, and judgment from others. She looks so silly. She needs to act like a grown-up. There is also fatigue and burnout. Yeah, nonstop daily stress can cause feelings of exhaustion, but studies show that positive social interaction creativity, physical movement can all alleviate my stress response. Inability to become present, constantly overthinking and future tripping in my own mind, all of these things get in my way. Although I know that shifting into play can actually get me right out of my mind, into my body and fully present. So I'm coming to realize that for me, play does not look the same as it does for my daughter. I like to play party games like Cards Against Humanity is my favorite. <laughs> this is my favorite kind of play. I don't really care about rules or points or winning or anything like that. As long as people are willing, I could play these games for hours. So in writing this reflection, I got curious as to why do these games appeal to me so much? And I think it's because games like this push people out of their buttoned up adult facades. 
Oftentimes these kind of games even take us by surprise. Hearing my somewhat guarded mother read Big Green Booger Explosion while playing Cards Against Humanity Family Edition with my family, a look of mischievous delight spread across her face and my kids started doubling over laughing. These games give us permission to let loose, not be in charge, push boundaries and take risks. As a responsibility laden adult, I need a bit of guidance to get myself out of my head and into a place where I can access joy and fun. So anybody wanna have a game night? <laughs> Hit me up anytime. <laughs> So like Sky, I too am a mother of three, two of which are grown adults now, hard to believe, and a 14-year-old son. And when I was thinking about play, it's no surprise that I do what I do because I was thinking back and a lot of the same things that Sky was sharing are um, a little challenging, right? I feel this need to be productive, but fortunately I'm in a job where I'm called into play a lot. Um, so I think that is actually a lifeline for me. Um, I have two older brothers who are 10 and 12 years older than me. So um, I now show up in the world as the adult I wish I had, because I was often just getting tagged around to little league games and entertaining myself and not having the playmates as close in age. That allowed me to get lost in stories, to have a great imagination, to play dress up, to make up magical worlds. And as we've, we lived in residence halls with our kids when they were little and a small duplex and now have a house. And as we, as, every time we moved, I would say, well, where's their art space going to be? Um, well, where can their playroom be? Where can these things be? just so that I would protect that sense of play. And um, having an oldest daughter who tends to slip right into that societal role of wanting to be a people pleaser and do what's supposed to be done, I find myself constantly going, you know, it's okay to just take a ceramics class because you enjoy it, right? And she pushes back a little bit and then later says, thanks, mom. Um, I have another one who loves to dance and I remember how much fun it has been in my life to um, tinker in the kitchen. And if you haven't made slime farts, let me just tell you, the belly laughs will heal your soul. You can make these bubbles and you can squeeze it and snap it and pop it, which brings me to my son, who is definitely very much the, the texture driven and the sensory seeking. And I myself, always kind of like followed the straight and narrow. And he has been the one who's gotten me comfortable with taking risks, right? And doing that risky play and mom, let's go out here and see what's out at the edge. But that's meant I had to change some shifting, right? I Anybody else grow up with the be careful, right? Watch where you're going. There's a difference in thinking about risks and hazards. So I share this, children are highly motivated to play in risky ways, but they are also very good at knowing their own capacities and avoiding risks they are not ready to take, either physically or emotionally. Our children know far better than we do what they are ready for. And so changing our shift to say a hazard, a hazard is something a child does not see. Like my son, we were walking across some log one day over a creek. And when we went to go jump down, I saw a little brown snake. So I had to point that out to him. My son being a lover of snake is like ready to dive head first, but just to be mindful that he's not gonna jump on the snake. That was his big worry. The risk is the challenge the child can see and chooses to undertake or not, right? He's going to go all in for the snake. And eliminating risk leads to children's inability to assess danger. So at the root of it, we want our kids to be safe. We want this world to be safe. 
But that also means we might have to get out of our comfort zone. We might have to be willing to get close up with bugs and crawdads. We might have to be willing to try our balance on something, right? And when we do that, we show it's okay to take risks and that we're learning and playing and experimenting together. Because, you know, life's too short to not try something, right? So I've shared before two books that I've been reading a lot over the past year and a half. One is Rest is Resistance by Tricia Hersey, which definitely speaks to that letting things go and that productivity counterculture. And the other I put out of the narthex, which is The Power of Fun by Katherine Price. And so I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about exploring the power of fun and rediscovering play. We can control whether we merely endure our days or experience and enjoy them. We can control whether we arrive on our deathbeds, feeling like we've wasted our time or end up satisfied with how we've spent our brief moment in the sun. True fun. Catherine explains, is the confluence of playfulness, connection, and flow. So thinking about the circle of playfulness, where do you find playfulness? What makes your heart sing, right? Who maybe is there? Then flow. We get stuck in these habits and these routines, but Sometimes your flow might be slow and steady. Sometimes it might be faster. Sometimes it needs to be disrupted. And connection, who are you playing with? How are you feeling connected to a space, a time, the energy in the room? And right there where that all intersects, that little tiny spot, that's where true fun happens. And when I saw this, it definitely was a, like a lightning bolt went off and it made some sense. She has amazing TED Talks. I encourage you to watch them. I'll throw some links in Facebook and things like that. <clears throat> but I actually also got to spend a week at IU going to a play conference. And I thought, well, we're not just gonna talk about play. We're gonna do some play. So who here remembers rock, paper, scissors? Okay, so this is why you're at tables and in groups. Okay. So we're gonna refresh. We're going back to basics. Get your hands ready. Sky and I are gonna review, okay? Scissor beats paper, paper beats rock, and rock beats scissor. Pretty simple, we all remember? Okay, so I'm gonna encourage you to play rock, paper, scissors at your table. Okay, and we'll come around too so that we make sure there's more people. We're just gonna have fun playing rock, paper, scissors for a few times. Let's see if you can get to an ultimate winner at each table. Not that it always has to be competitive, but this round of activity fun is competitive. Yeah, no prizes, but you do get bragging rights. Yes. So you're gonna take a couple paces. So you're gonna go one, two, three, and then turn and shoot at your partner. Okay, okay? we're gonna level it up. Okay, ready? Ready? Uh -huh. Rock, paper, scissors, duel. One, two, three, shoot. Tie. Okay, so you're a winner. What about you two? Okay, so now we're down. Do we eliminate it? Now we're down to four. Yep, you can go back to your tables. All right, Sky, you're going to have to jump in so that Mark has someone to go again. Or no, we're good. Okay, we got four. All right, ready? One. Two, three, shoot. Oh, you are the victor, right? Yeah. Care, way to go. We're tied. But you all three did rock, right? Oh. Or, oh, no, you you win. Okay, so you two are tied. So you two go off. Lynette, yeah, thank you for playing. Yeah. You stay. Hold on. We go again? Yep, you two go again. We'll all right, ready? One, two, three, shoot. They are too much of the same brain. One more time. One, two, three, shoot. 
One more time. Otherwise, it's going to be a three-way playoff. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, there we go. That's you, too. Thanks for playing. All right, come here. All right, ready? All right. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, okay. Again. One, two, three, shoot. <laughs> All right, we're going to try one more time. And if not, we're just going to hail two champions. Then you're just too good. Exactly. We'll try one more time. One more time. Ready? It could be a time. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now you may go. <laughs> so the next thing I want to do, as if our hearts and bloods aren't pumping enough, is to just get ourselves doing a little body percussion. You can stay sitting or you can stand up, but I want to see and feel the energy. Okay, so we can kind of make this up together and kind of pick up, but look around the room. We might try some things like a clap, a tap, a snap, and just kind of see if we can find a rhythm together, okay? And just feel how the energy moves and changes. Ready? Let's get it going. put your hands with somebody and just feel that energy what are you noticing do you feel warm I hear buzzing buzz do you just feel that doesn't it make you feel alive thank you you can sit down <laughs> Okay, I've got one more activity for you. All right, laughing. Think of that person in your life, it might be you, who has the best laugh. There is someone, my friend Diane, who I would have been on retreat with this week, I've recorded her laugh because it is so infectious that when I am really low or really stressed, I will just listen to her laugh because it makes me just lighter. It breaks that tension. So when I say laughter yoga, some people might be scared. You might be worried. We're not doing downward dog. It's really easy, okay? <laughs> so <clears throat> we have laughs, right? Try with me. <laughs> Join in. <laughs> now let's... Let's... Let's try this. done some air band I know some people have air band okay it could be guitars you could have a mean harmonica you could have a trombone 
Okay, you can play whatever musical instrument you imagine. And we're gonna look at each other and laugh and play some air band. Okay, you ready? So look around the room. We're good? You're making the music. Your laughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's gonna chill. <laughs> Get a little, little rock. Ooh, it sounds just maestroing. <laughs> such good spirits. Thank you. And how good do you feel? How good? Oh. Catherine Price reminds us that what we don't realize is that far from being frivolous or selfish, the pursuit of fun will help us achieve all of these goals. Life is not a zero-sum equation. We can care about fun and be conscientious citizens who are committed to improving the world. Indeed, fun can give us more energy with which to do so. And if we want our own lives to be satisfying and joyful, that true fun, it isn't optional. It shouldn't be an afterthought. It should be our guiding star. And so as we start to close our time together, I'm reminded that music is one of the arts that we all have inside. We may not all be able to play an instrument, but we can sing or clap or tap our feet. Have you ever seen a baby bouncing up and down in a crib in time to some music? When you think of that, some of the baby's first me messages from their parents might have been lullabies or a tune from childhood or at least the music of speaking voices. All of us have had that experience of hearing a tune from childhood and having that melody evoke a memory or feeling. The music we hear early on tends to stay with us all our lives. And so John Fisher, I believe is gonna help us reconnect with a song that most of us know and many of our children love. And you have instruments and scarves at your tables to join in making some joyful noise. We hereby officially tender our resignations as adults. We have decided we would like to accept the responsibilities of a five-year-old again. I want to go to McDonald's and think that it's a four-star restaurant. I want to sail sticks across a fresh mud puddle and make ripples in a pond with rocks. I want to think M&Ms are better than money because you can eat them. I want to lie under a big oak tree and watch the ants march up its trunk. I want to run a lemonade stand with my friends on a hot summer's day. I want to go fishing and care more about catching the minnows along the shore than the big bass in the lake. I want to think the world is fair. I want to return to a time when life was simple, when all I knew about were colors, multiplication tables, and nursery rhymes. When I didn't know what I know now, when all I knew was to be happy because I was blissfully unaware of all the things that should make me worried. I want to think that a quarter is worth more than a dollar because it's prettier and weighs more. I want to think that everyone is honest and good. I want to believe that anything is possible. I want to be oblivious to the complexities of life and be overly excited by the little things in life again. I want to believe in the power of smiles, hugs, and a kind word, truth, dreams, and imagination, the tooth fairy, a kiss that makes the boo-boo go away, making angels in the snow 
and that my granddad is the strongest person in the world. So here's my checkbook and my car keys, my credit cards and the bills, my 401k statements, my stocks and bonds, my collections, my insurance premiums, my job, my house and the payments, my email addresses, cell phone, computer and watch. Uh, we are officially resigning from adulthood. And if you want to discuss it with us further, well, you're going to have to catch us because tag, you're it. Tag. <laughs> Thank you.